So in this video, let's talk about some of the common E++ concepts that are heavily used in Gazebo plugins. First one is namespace. So what you understand from namespace is that it's basically it's a way of grouping things together. Like here, this variable and this function are grouped together. Okay. So this is basically a nested namespace, which you can see over here. How you can access this variable? Like this is an x variable over here, which you can see. If you want to access this variable, how you'll be using? Firstly, you have to start from the top namespace, name one, name one, then scope resolution operator, then second name, then scope resolution operator, and then variable. Same way you will do it for the function to access the function. First name, second name, scope resolution operators, and then the function name. So this is how you access the namespace to access this variables. Okay. What do you mean by this? So you are seeing over here gazebo so what you just learned from here this means that this gazebo is also a namespace right so everything that you will see in gazebo is actually comes under a gazebo namespace so because everything is defined under a gazebo namespace that's why whenever you write your plugin you have to give a gazebo namespace and write everything inside that so this is how a namespace gazebo is there and everything is written inside it I can show it to you in this code as well. So look over here. This is a plugin and you can see over here. I have defined everything within this gazebo namespace, right? So everything start within this gazebo and end within this gazebo namespace because it is being defined like that in gazebo API. So now let me show you what is gazebo API as well. Just Google like this gazebo API and open the first link. And this is the official documentation of the gazebo APIs has all the function and classes that you need to code in gazebo to write the gazebo plugin okay so this left side things are very important for us like common event messages let me show common to you so what you are seeing over here is a gazebo namespace you see so everything is defined within this gazebo so that's why we are using a gazebo namespace same case for the event as well you see everything is defined within the gazebo namespace so that's why everything is there like this and it for the physics as well you can see over here when you go inside this you can see this gazebo okay now there are classes inside this when you go inside this classes then there are function and all those things will we are going to discuss in very much depth in the coming up videos now let come back to this point so i hope you understood why everything needs to be defined within the gazebo namespace now let's move on to the next thing now see over here there is one concept of this pointer in C++ that is being heavily used while using class variables and member functions. Why basically we use this pointer to refer to the variable data member and variable functions. So you can see over here also that this constructor is having the input as id and this both are similar. How? Then how are you going to differentiate between this? So for that this this is there so this pointer is there so it's pointer that's why this arrow is there so this arrow help us to define that we are going to access this data member okay so from this you are able to avoid this this kind of problem id is equal to id what the meaning of this this makes no sense right so this is how you can avoid this using this then id of it so same way you can access the member function how you'll access the member first suppose this is a member function if you want to access this you will this keyword it's exactly same for accessing both okay so this is also being heavily used while defining the classes let me go down and show you something so you see over here what i have defined so basically this is within a gazebo okay so this is a within a class plugin class and you see over here this this is a private member i have defined a private data member name model and how i am going to access this with this keyword so that will make no problem for it for our code to know what we are want to access we want to access this model data member okay so if you, you can see over here that this load is there then it is having this pointer and this both data types are same and we want this pointer to store over here so that's why we have used this keyword with this so to avoid any confusion so this will now store at this model pointer so that's what basically it's doing over here same with the case of this 
so this is a subscriber we'll discuss this in more detail but right now just understand this point so this is also within a class okay so now this is the member function and how we access the member function using this then the member function name so that way we can access it then you you see over here this line over here this is taking this member function with this keyword so what basically this is doing over here that's making it to point to this member function so that's equivalent to this this entire line is equivalent to this pointing on this member function okay so this is how things are being done in, and i hope now you have a very much clear understanding on this let me show you these things in code as well i already showed you the gazebo thing on it now uh, when you initialize this this node is there this we are using this keyword see we are using this keyword to subscribe to this so this subscriber is actually a private member it's a data member okay so this is a data member and how you accessing this using this keyword so that we can use this in future to subscribe to things don't worry we will go on very depth of this same way how we are accessing this message how we are accessing on message the member function with this keyword so that's why we have given this keyword as the input to this subscriber okay so i hope you got some good understanding on this both things so this is very important and you will see this will, these two things will be coming very commonly while writing a gazebo plugin classes okay so that's it for this video